you know, hi guys, I have to say, I've been chuckling along to myself for at least the last 30 minutes uh, because I'm that devoid of humor. No, no, the reason I'm laughing is um, I'd completely forgotten that I had written this lesson and I was just looking over it thinking, why have I written so much? Uh, look, I'm the maths guru and I'll get into the humor in just a moment, but it, it's good having you along. Hopefully you are doing well today. Um, expanding expressions. Look, uh, when I wrote this lesson, uh, we were just heading into a very, very big module for uh, my students uh, on quadratics. Um, and uh, what I was basically trying to say to them was just work, focus. And my guys that I taught when I was doing this video were awesome. They are a freaking amazing group of kids. And uh, if you're watching this video and I'm currently teaching you, yes, you know who, I, know who I'm talking about. You guys are amazing. And I have very, very high hopes for you. Um, and if you haven't, subscribe. Uh, what do you mean subscribe? Yeah, there's the, the red the arrow. It, it really helps me if you get to, to be able to subscribe. Thank you very much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move myself to the other side of the screen. Yep. And what I'm going to do is uh, just go through this. Um, now, in Victoria, much to the disgust of most of uh, the rest of Victoria, uh, the most of Australia, um, they're allowed to use a summary book. They're actually allowed to take in a summary book to the exam and they can put anything into it. Uh, they can also put in, um, they can take a textbook in, in, in the VCE, in the year 12 exam, the equivalent of year 13, A-levels in the United Kingdom, and I'm, I'm sure all sorts of exams around the world. Um, in Victoria, you can take a textbook in. In fact, you can take one bound reference and that reference can be as thick as you like. It can, as so long as it's bound and there are no loose pages, you can take in every worked example, exam, paper every textbook you can find you might need a truck to back it in and there's no way you'd ever find anything but it's there and what I'm trying to say here was that a summary book basically needed to have bits and pieces in it uh, to have only examples that are relevant to you there is no point trying to recreate a textbook so if you're watching this now and you have me as a teacher or you're you're lucky enough to have a teacher who who wants you to uh, sort of document your work don't try and recreate a textbook. My view it is, if you ever get stuck on a question, it's that that should go in your summary book. If you ever need to ask for help on a particular topic or an instance of, of a question, or there was something in a question you didn't understand, that's what should go in your summary book. One or two line summary in your own words. Otherwise, you may as well take the textbook in. But what made me chuckle was uh, this bit here. I would completely forgotten it. I mean, I've even put an eye in, and I've literally gone, I'm watching you in this module more than any other. I, I, honestly, I... What, I <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. If you're currently taught by me, I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit mad. All right. One of the things about um, algebra is common mistakes. Most of those mistakes come generally through pluses and minuses and some signs or, or not multiplying things together. And this little video is much about common mistakes as it is about expanding expressions. So I put a number of questions here that uh, I've sort of made common mistakes. And I want to see A, whether you understand what the mistake was and B, uh, how to rectify it. So let's make it a bit bigger. This one here, minus two times by X minus three, uh, I've got as minus two X minus six. And hopefully you're going to look at that and say, ah, 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 no, actually, uh, Matthew Guru, you've made a mistake there. It's not a minus, it's a plus. And the point of it is, Minus 2 times x is in fact minus 2x, but then you have to do minus 2 times minus 3, which actually gives you plus 6. Now, a minor mistake, but in an exam, that's just lost you a mark, and depending where it is in your working out, it could have lost you a whole lot more than that. The next common mistake uh, for uh, multiplying expressions is this one here. Now, I need everyone to realize that when you square something, you're multiplying it by itself. You are not squaring what's inside the bracket. And sadly, what's happened here is all too common. People make that mistake all the time. What x plus 4 squared means is actually x plus 4 times x plus 4. And if you write it that way, chances are, if you've watched my previous video or you know anything about FOIL, then you know that this is a FOIL first, outside, inside, and last. So you do the first times first which is x squared, times uh, four times x is plus four x, plus another four x, and plus four times plus four is 16, which gives me x squared plus eight x plus 16. Now, you'll argue that yes, we got most of it, but again, you wouldn't get the marks, you've made a mistake, and if you then had to go on and sketch this or find turning points or whatever else, you really are stuffed because of that fundamental mistake. What about here? 
Well, this isn't a squared multiply by itself, but it is still a FOIL question. And can you see where the mistake is? Yeah? Okay. So, x times x is x squared. x times plus 3 is plus 3x. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. And minus 3 times plus 3 is minus 9. And so, that simplifies to give all... Actually, they go... And what you end up with is x squared minus 9. Now, this is a beautiful example of something called, I was about to write pods, which are great chocolates over here, by the way, dops, difference of perfect squares. Now, there's already a video on this. Uh, I've done it before I did this video, but I'll come back to what dops is in just a moment. But again, by not multiplying this out properly, I ended up with an extra term. So what on earth have I done here? Very, very good question. Well, if we multiply this out, what we should get is, ah, I can see what I've done here. Now, bod mass, bid mass, it's really, really important. But what I seem to have done here is made that common mistake of doing six minus four, which is two, and then multiplying by the x plus one. So that's how I got my answer. But sadly, that's incorrect because I have to do the brackets first. So I'm gonna write down the six first. And then I'm going to do minus 4 times x, which is minus 4x, and minus 4 times plus 1, which is minus 4. Simplifying that actually gives me the correct answer of 2 minus 4x. All right, again, just a silly mistake. And a lot of these mistakes happen in the spur of the moment, very much when you're doing an exam and you're, you're sort of stressed to get through to the next question. Right, what about this one? 6 minus 4x minus 2. Oh, interesting. Seems to have been done in a different way. Well, again, we were looking for 6 minus 4 times x, and this would be plus 8. Ah, I see what they've done. Now, this time, minus 4 times minus 2 is plus 8. So 6 plus 8 gives me 14 minus 4x. What I think they've done is to have made this silly mistake. They've done 6 minus 4x and minus 8. They haven't done the minus times the minus. And as such, that gives, they get, gave them the wrong answer of minus 4x minus 2. One more. x squared plus 10x plus 10. How have we done this? Ah, uh, you see what's happened? Well, it's FOIL. And I reckon they've done, oops, that's not right. They've done pretty much the right thing. They've done x times x, which is x squared. They've done x times 4, which is 4x. And x times 6, which is 6x. But then they've done 4 plus 6, which gave me the 10. They've added them together. They've not multiplied them. 6, 12, 18, 24 plus 24 gives me the correct answer of 10x plus 24. Again, such a small mistake. But in a test, you've at least lost the mark for the answer. Oh, you probably lost a lot more than that. Now, this lesson ties very much into the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, which is freaking awesome, by the way. If your teacher is using that, you're over here, or you've written anything by Cambridge, it is pretty amazing. Um, but the, the section of work that this comes from actually highlights two things, DOPS and perfect squares. Now, DOPS stands for Difference of Perfect Squares. And by that, it means you are looking for two squared terms that are subtracted from each other. So, for example, x squared minus 16, x squared minus 9, x squared minus 100. They are all perfect squares and difference of perfect squares. So just be very, very careful. Uh, there's more coming on dots a bit later on. But the theory states that if I do a plus b multiplied by a minus b using FOIL, I get a squared plus ab minus ab minus b squared. Now multiplying this out correctly means that those two there disappear and I get a squared minus b squared. Now again, you're going to say, well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, more importantly, a squared minus b squared can be written as a plus b and a minus b. Now again, there's a lot of this coming up, particularly when we do completing the square. But this dot stuff is actually really, really important. Being able to decide when I have two squares. And likewise, a perfect square, something like x plus 3 squared, or x minus 6 squared, or x plus 10 squared, they're all called perfect squares. If I had x plus 3 squared 
minus 6, for example, that is not a perfect square. We're looking for this number here to be 0. And this textbook exercise looks very much at this idea of perfect squares. I'm not going to say too much because it, it sort of comes up a bit later on in the course. Now, three words or three language things that you must know about. The distributive law uh, basically is when you multiply everything inside a set of brackets by what's outside that set of brackets. So if I had x, x minus 3, if I'm multiplying what's outside the brackets by what's inside the brackets, then I'm using the distributive law. Binomial products, lots more of this to come. Over and over again, we'll meet the binomial products. But basically, that's things like x plus 3 x minus 2, by meaning 2, and product many times. So there are two things here multiplied by each other. And like terms, we've been doing like terms since year 7, year 8. No, no, actually year 7, where things like 3x plus 4x, they are like terms, but 3x plus 4x squared, they are not like terms, because x's and x squareds are not the same. Well, 11 minutes so far, and I'm going to get this way under 15 minutes. But to be fair, it was realistically speaking just a video on expanding expressions and more so in trying to highlight that silly, silly mistakes can undo all of your work. And that's one of the things you're going to have to work on over the course of this uh, series of videos. Well, ladies and gentlemen, much respect to all of you out there for watching. Uh, those of you who are in Hull, hi. Those of you who are in Australia, a really, really good good idea. If you haven't already subscribed, then do me that honor. There is a circle -y thing for you. Please, please subscribe. And if you would do me the honor, could you actually just send emails around, put it on Facebook, actually get some shares out there, share some love, um, so that people can actually watch these videos and hopefully understand maths. If not, there's a new video for you to watch. It's been good. I'll see you next time.